guys for joining us wherever you are around the world. Um, so it's it's close to lunchtime around us. So please don't. Please don't hold it against us if you hear us stomach grumbling. Anyway, <laughs> uh, my name is Jing. I'm the brand uh, manager on Star Wars for Hasbro. And I'm Chris. I'm design manager on Star Wars and Indiana Jones, but we're not here to talk about that today. No, we're here to talk Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk Star Wars. So anyways, um, as I will quickly go through and ask you guys for to uh, ask your questions. Um, and I know you guys have some great questions and we definitely want to get to them. So first off, did you guys watch Ahsoka? Just curious. Of course. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I just want to make sure because it's so exciting. We're busting at the seams to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil anything. So oh, are we talking spoilers? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's seen Ahsoka should be, you know, here talking to us. Um, anyway, so I will go through the questions really quickly. Why don't we kick it off with Toy Anxiety, Craig? Hey, everybody. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Um, yes, Ahsoka was fantastic. Um, super exciting. Lots of possibilities. Um, so um, my first question is, so there seems to be a lot of renewed energy in world building opportunities with the vintage collection, with the Rebel Bunker, the N1, and obviously the Ghost. The throne room is coming, um, but we're still pretty far away from the the glory days of retail shelves lined with vehicles and play sets. So with the ever-changing landscape of big box retail space, what would need to change or keep happening um, in, in the world of vintage collection sales in order to get more than two to three deluxe vehicles or play sets a year? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the the landscape has changed, not just for us, like in the toy space, it's changed drastically for the entire world. So it's it's always fun to be nostalgic about what we had in the past. Um, but I would say in general, you know, we be, go based off of cues, based off of fan support, based off of your interactions and based off of like the demand and the sales. So a good anchor for us is just seeing how you guys react to the items that we put out there. So if things are well received, and those are some recent successes, like you've mentioned, that we're really proud of and we love to see, you know, just keep them coming, keep letting us know what you like. Uh, we definitely keep that in mind as we look at the future opportunities. Um, it's hard to say about like what we had in the past, though. I think that would be, that would always be amazing. Um, you know, it, we'd love to go back to the 90s. Yeah, I, I think Jing touched on it well in that it's it's in response to what you guys do with the products we do put out. If you buy everything we put out, like you guys went for the N1 Starfighter, we're probably going to do more of that sort of thing. So I think it's just going to be that. Um, also, we've mentioned this before, but like you guys do such a great job of of requests for figures and tracking votes and like what what figures are most important for fans. I'd love to see more of that for vehicles and play sets and that sort of thing. I mean, that's just as valuable for us and just as impactful. So yeah, so keep it coming and we'd love to do more awesome. if you guys want more. Get, get ready for a bunch of the top 10 play sets we need from Hasbro. <laughs> That's, next week. That would be triggered amazing. by Chris. Yes, <laughs> I would love to come in Monday morning to that. That would be August amazing. Twenty fourth. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, toying around, Kevin. Hey, uh, good to see you guys in San Diego. Uh, long time listener, first time, <laughs> first time caller. Um, for the Haslab, which is awesome. We see we just hit Ezra, but um, I love the card backs for those individual figures and a lot of Star Wars collectors collect mint on card just they don't want to open stuff um so for people who want to have both you know one for display one to you know have a nice card was there ever uh an option or like something something in the works where it's like uh in the has lab you check an extra box and you can buy an extra set of uncarded figures because i would love to buy two obviously that helps the campaign but i'm not going to buy seconds who's going to buy an extra ship without the team right uh so that's kind of hard even if i want two two sets of figures but also if there's like mainline release for those figures how far out are they if they are available and how long do i have to wait before i open the uh, uncarded 
<laughs> or sorry, the carded figures. Just t- um, t- taming my expectations. No, I mean, we, we we love that you guys are asking these sort of questions. It's it's fun to to see the interest in the energy around new ways to do things with Haslabs. We're always looking at it new new approaches and new things we can do. I mean, there's nothing like that going on with this one. Um, but it's it's good data that'll inform future stuff maybe. Um, but yeah, I think just just keep thinking along those lines and sharing those thoughts. That's all that's all great stuff for us to to get feedback from you guys on. Awesome. Thanks. All right, Chelsea Boba Fett fan club. Good to see you again. I'm so glad to see both of you and obviously Craig and Kevin. Very good to like meet you. Um, so my question is, is there any truth to the rumor that there will, there will be a huge wave of Black Series reissues? Yeah, so it's interesting. We We really can't speak to rumors in general unless it's like told by us, official communications. Um, but yeah, we currently don't have any plans to share for that. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, toy Anxiety, we're back up to the top. It's a small group today, so I think we could, you know, keep it going. We'll motor through these, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, and by the way, I, I spoke to both of you, uh, right? I think I might have been one of the first people at uh, Comic Con, right when the ghost was uh, revealed, that was just like that was my moment of the weekend. That was so fun. Like the pandemonium around the Hasbro booth was it was so it was so good. So, uh, congrats on the success of the project. It was good for you guys. It it made me a little nervous carrying that thing out with so many people around. <laughs> I didn't want I anything mean, to happen there. Right, like you're kind of expecting like the classic like uh, cartoon hold the cake, yeah, like, like ball, yeah. like fall down obstacles. the stairs, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, so this is kind of an open-ending question, but I, I wanted you guys to maybe be able to speak on this as, as part of the team. What do you think is currently the biggest opportunity for growth in the Star Wars action figures? Um, probably I would say just with, with all the new entertainment that's happening and new fans coming in, I think that's really the, that's the groundswell that's going to carry star wars for a while and re-energize it i mean we see it all the time as new generations are introduced by their by their parents and grow up with star wars this one's bringing in a whole new wave of energy from people that that are being introduced to star wars for the first time that are adults and i think that's that's a huge movement toward uh more excitement and more growth across all of it so yeah and we're so excited uh, that we partner so closely with Lucasfilm because they're they're putting out all these great shows, Ahsoka being like the latest, but Young Jedi Adventure also that happened yeah. earlier this year. It's starting that preschool line as well for us. And they, you know, I have a toddler at home as well. It's like definitely starting them young and giving them exposure to great shows uh, from Lucasfilm that, you know, is is continuing to happen. So. Yeah, and we want to, and we want to, and try to support all different brackets of people in there that are coming into it. And like Jing said, with our preschool line is a great new addition. But then things that we're going to continue, I mean, retro and vintage collection and Black Series stuff, like those are all super meaningful to different people in the community. And trying to grow all of those in their own ways to really shore up everything. All right, awesome. toying around. Thank, Thank you, Craig. Toying around. I'm muted. I'm a professional YouTuber. Um, <laughs> the the role play items like helmets and lightsabers, like one to one scale, is really great for collectors uh, to display or even cosplayers. Um, are blasters and, and more gun looking type items kind of like on the table? Uh, or are there any issues with making making kind of replicas like that for fans? Yeah, I mean, we've done blasters in different ways. We've done it with like the Nerf and band. We have kid line items with it for sure. I think uh, right now in the premium role play space, we're going to do helmets and lightsabers for obvious reasons. Um, so we have no plans to do that in the premium role play space. Gotcha. All right, Chelsea, Boba Fett fan club. 
Yes. So how do you kind of decide which items would be reissued? Like the prototype Boba Fett helmet that recently went back up for pre-order. Yeah. Yeah. So rerun. <laughs> for us, um, it's a mix of different things like demand for sure, but also on the logistics side, like capacity, what else we have in the line, what new things is coming out. Um, so there are times when those opportunities for those reruns make sense and they come up and we do them. Um, but it's definitely something we have to balance with what else we have in the line and just demand for an item in general. Cool, cool. Would I be able to really quick ask a like quick follow up? Like, is there any like, are you getting information obviously from like fan sites and that kind of thing when you're kind of looking into or people who are saying on social like, oh, I mean, I wish I had gotten into collecting before so I could have gotten that, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Those definitely come in mind. Um, the community is very vocal and just about what they hope to see come back, what they hope to see coming up, new figures or figures that need to be redone. Like we hear them all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's all. Us, like, yeah. yeah, it's all part of the data that goes into those decisions we make and judge what the demand is. I mean, from social scraping to proprietary tools that we have in house, all that sort of thing goes into feed that data. So yeah, yeah it's. Don't be quiet if you want something. That's, <laughs> it certainly does affect things. Yeah. For sure, for sure, yeah. Well, I am I was excited to see the prototype Boba Fett helmet, as you may have imagined. <laughs> yes, that one's cool. But yeah, it's also like to that point, it's a collaboration with retailers as well, because they, they issue that rerun out there. Um, awesome, toying around, Kevin. Oh, mixing it up. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I wanted to say, in in San Diego, Chris, when you carried that ship out, it was crazy. You're like a rock star because people were up at the velvet <laughs> rope, like with their phones out ready. So good job not dropping a giant prototype. Um, but my question is for vintage collection, a, a lot of the Mandalorian figures, like you can put the helmet on uh, on the actual un unmasked head. But I think some of the older ones, you, it was like a full head swap, uh, where you just take yeah. the whole head with the neck peg off. Um, but with the with the new ones, when you put the helmet on, it kind of makes the head look a little bit bigger compared to the old method. Uh, is this something the team is aware of and consider like just um, maybe yeah. maybe switching no, it back to the the other way? Well, it's I think it's likely we'll continue to do both approaches. Uh, it just depends on what we're doing. What's what is kind of the more important thing with that figure? Um, okay. So like some figures, it's it's important we think to have the play of actually putting the helmet on the head and prioritizing a a bigger hairstyle or a, a more accurately scaled head on there but also having that play is going to drive the the helmet size up a little bit okay. but then and then other times it's not so important to actually have the moment of putting the helmet on and that's a great chance to do a swappable head helmet scenario so it, it's all about just prioritizing like what's playable and and what feels more appropriate at the time. And it can in in some cases the helmet can get a little big, but it's we're still trying to like hit minimum wall thicknesses and all that sort of thing. But it okay. there's so many factors, especially on a TVC scale figure, where those differences become more and more noticeable. And we're aware of those, but like I said, prioritizing playability on some means uh, a slightly larger helmet mm. but that same figure might come out later on a re-release or something with a swappable helmet version there's all those sort of things we do awesome the fennec shan top tier vintage collection love nice. it thanks cool. and yes i like to keep you guys on the toe on your toes apparently but don't worry we'll make sure everyone has their fair shot uh toy anxiety craig um yeah, no, that Fennec Shand is really good, and I know the Sabine on her speeding speeder bike will be when whenever that happens, because nobody <laughs> is more sad than me that I can't go to Target right now and buy that because she rules. Okay, uh, you guys kind of touched on this, um, but maybe you can expand on it a little bit in the last question. So basically, like the way it is with adult collectors now, like people like us or who are willing to put five hundred dollars on the table to get a ghost 
we all started off as kids and we had these really great whether you started off with like vintage star wars or power of the force 2 you had these really expansive lines in the 70s and 90s and 2000s that really kind of lended themselves towards the collector's mentality so is it a priority for for you and your team to ensure that the kids of today do become the collectors of tomorrow yeah a hundred percent um it's on our minds and in fact like you know we speak to you guys as a fan team we have a kid team uh, on star wars as well like a whole separate group of us on the kid side and chris and i on the fan side and you know many more behind the scenes so there's a lot of us um so it's constantly on our mind you know we talked like you mentioned craig we talked a little bit about it with like young jedi adventures you know and lucasfilm helping us bridge that gap with entertainment but for us having kid items out there as well as our action figures that i think also can be targeted towards that kid audience with you know parents buying it for the kids or seeing it down the aisle to your mention to your point of uh of buying it off the shelves off target or walmart or any of our core retailers um so those are something we always hope to strive for um and partnering with lucasfilm and making sure that we keep building that community i know that chris and i it makes our day when we go to San Diego Comic-Con and we see like those young fans come over with such enthusiasm um, and cheers. And we know that like they're the future because um, we know that that is what keeps the habit alive. Um, so it's on our minds for sure. Uh, and we definitely want to we definitely want to keep building that community with the kid team as well. If I could just do a, a quick little follow up on that, and it'll take two seconds, but because Jake Stevens from Four Lombazakis isn't here, I, I have to do this for him on his behalf because I think he has the world record of asking it every time. But uh, we do see other Hasbro brands like Ghostbusters and Marvel having a kids focused action figure line, something five POA, uh, lower price point. Um, do you find it, it it can be a deterrent for for kids? with the price point, with no collector's line that is action figures, is that something that gets at least discussed or talked about? Everything gets discussed and talked about. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, and thank you for keep bringing that up and good representing for those that aren't Well, he's, oh, he, he flew to England with his family, so I told oh, him I'd, okay. I'd, all right, it's all in I'd the keep, world of kids, yeah. I get it. <laughs> keep the yeah. dream alive for Jake. Yeah, yeah. it's it's all... A, all those sort of things are are constantly in discussions and on the table because it is it is continuing to to feed the pipeline of fans for the future. So yeah, right. Thank yeah. You guys. But we have a full group of kid team uh, for sure. We will always be sharing information back to them as well. So thank you for bringing that up. All right, Chelsea Boba Fett fan club. Yeah, so at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, Chris and I, we talked a lot about the retro collection Book of Boba Fett figures and like people from our site really loved reading the article and stuff all about kind of like the design process. I was wondering if there's any more of kind of like a solidified date for when those might be released or if it's still kind of fall 2023. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would say no specific time frame at this point. I think that was a reveal only, um, if I remember correctly. So at, at, we might be looking at maybe even early next year, honestly. Um, so there's no specific time frame, but wanted to give you guys an update that that might be coming early next year. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. All right, keeping you on your toes, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> You want to ask the next question? Oh my gosh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the HasLab program has kind of become the gold standard of crowdfunding, um, and that is a testament specifically to Star Wars. I think the Barge and the Razor Crest and now the Ghost are just unbelievable projects and couldn't be happier uh, as a fan and as a collector. Um, there have been some other HasLabs that have struggled within Star Wars and other brands, um and it kind of seemed like in those cases maybe fan reaction what did not quite match what the maybe brand teams or marketing teams thought so and i say this with the caveat that if a fan vote ever happened i think the ghost would have won so i think you're 100 percent right on board but um is that a possibility in the future to to get like a fan voting or poll 
for uh, future projects on what folks are interested in. Because the thing I want is way out of left field and would never win, but I'd love to get the chance to vote it, vote for it, which would be something. In the, I, I want a, I want a retro Paz Lab. I want a retro, like an enhanced version of of an old playset. Because I think, for what it's worth, that the retro stuff is the coolest stuff going on right now. But, oh my anyways, gosh. fan voting is it is it ever on the table for for these large projects? By the way, your last comment just means you best friends with Chris. <laughs> it did. I was going to say, Jing has to take this one because all I want to do is talk about retro HasLab opportunities. Yeah. There are so many. Don't say, you, don't say it. I have I to. I is. have to. We part, our, One of the funny things leading up to the ghost is our channel convinced everybody that there was a, um, that uh, it was Ewok Village confirmed. Uh, so much so that, 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 People we, thought we, we did serious, love but... we did love the Photoshop jobs that people were doing inside oh, yeah, the empty so display funny. case. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. So, so um, but I I do love the ghost. But yeah, I, I think that there's a really cool opportunity for something a little bit different with with retro. Uh, but yeah, fan voting in general I think is a really cool uh, opportunity. Yeah, I would say you know we we think about everything that you guys throw out there. So when you have ideas, we love to hear them because we do think of them. So far, like these has labs are just such large investments. And I don't know that we would get an official voting campaign out there, but we certainly, to your point, look at fan sites, look at comments, look at commentary and feedback that we hear from you guys, either, you know, at events, at these interviews or, you know, and uh, anywhere really. So as the community is so involved, we love that. We definitely want to keep those discussions coming and we'd love to hear that from you guys as well. But I think. You know, thank you for saying the ghost would have won anyways. We'd like to thank that. We were hearing from the fan sites. A lot of them are very excited about the ghost. And that was one of their top choices. And it just made sense with the Soka live action show uh, coming out or came out rather. Um, and still ongoing. So more to see. Um, so, yeah, that to us is is why the ghost just made a lot of sense. But if there are anything out of left field. We definitely love to talk to you. You and Chris can get a beer <laughs> and talk for, for a couple hours. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be, you know, something we can definitely uh, keep in mind if you guys keep the discussions alive. Yeah, awesome. And like, like Jing said, it's it's unlikely we would, ever, we would ever do an official vote for a HasLab. But that doesn't mean you guys can't do that on your own sites. I mean, because if you guys are doing that and getting huge numbers and seeing something spike that is unexpected for you, we're paying attention to that too. I mean, that's part of the social scraping we do and and why we love our fan community so much for Star Wars is that you guys are that invested in doing that sort of thing. We pay attention to that from vehicles to has labs to figures we're watching. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Toying around, Kevin. Uh, this one is more more opinionated i think just want to know between star wars fans with opinions <laughs> never <laughs> here on um, no um chris and jing i just want to know how big uh fans you are of carson Teva and how much money i should put aside for the eventual slew of action figures that you're going to put out in vintage collection and black series because there's been none so far uh and you know a character who's been in most of the new if not all new favreau first shows just you know just want to know how how much should i budget for yeah he is a staple for sure and we love carson Teva too he is you know as you know the the actor in general is just so nice and he's an approachable amazing guy and the fact that he's been such a staple throughout like you sh like you said entertainment recently um it's not really a <laughs> It's we can't say any we can't address anything that hasn't been announced publicly, of course, like but for us, it's just great to see him, um, you know, jokes aside, save all your money forever for him <laughs> for figures. But no, it's it's just, you know, something that we will keep in mind if you guys keep telling us how amazing he is. All right, we will. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, there have been a lot of versions of them too. So if you guys want to do yeah. a poll on which version of Carson TV you'd like to see us do, <laughs> I believe like, that would be called a poll. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll All show of them. <laughs> the answer is yes. Follow. Thank you. Which one do you want? Yes. Uh, Boba Fett fan club, Chelsea. 
Yeah, so I'm really excited for what I'm affectionately calling the Boba Fett dream house uh, to soon be released. But I was wondering, um, I saw that it had gotten delayed, The obviously the Boba Fett throne room, not the Boba Fett dream house. Um, but I saw that it got delayed to September 15th. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about like, is there a reason you can divulge or if you expect any further delays on that playset? Because, oh my God, I need it. <laughs> You know what, you're saying true to your name. <laughs> um, I like how excited you are. You're counting down the days. It's only a couple weeks away. We are not aware of any other delays. So, so you should be getting that in your hands to play with very shortly. Um, you know, in, in terms of like delays happening, it does happen occasionally with either logistics or operations or whatever would it be. Um, I think it was delayed just like a few weeks. Um, but yeah, for we definitely are just as excited for you guys to have it in hand and tell us all about how much you love it. Yeah, and that just as an example, the the one we had on display at San Diego, at the convention, that was that was a full production piece. So that was just it. It's there happened. They're in production or actually production is probably already done, but they're, yeah, they're moving. So. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So are we, we're excited for it, it to start showing up on people's unboxing videos. <laughs> uh, toy anxiety, Craig. Um, yeah, I, th I think this is my last one. So um, one thing collectors do a lot of the time is, uh, make assumptions about business practices without knowing the ins and outs. Um, so uh, I apologize on all of our behalf for doing that, but I do have kind of a question that hopefully will shed some light. So what are the primary like revenue generators that determine annual budgets for vintage collection and black series? And we can keep it super high level because I know we'll probably have to, but like as a, for instance, if the ghost is projected to sell 15,000 units, but ends up doubling that and sells 30,000. What kind of positive impacts does that financial gain have um, on the, the rest of the, the line for, for the fiscal year and the, and the, the next year? Well, I mean, on for specific examples, like the N1 or the Ghost or anything that, that might sell, be a spike on a sales curve, like that one, those tell us like, hey, fans are looking at these sort of things and maybe want more of these. Um, but we have to cross-reference that data with, is that is the ghost super meaningful on a spike? I mean, and we don't know if it's a spike yet or not. I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, everybody go buy more. Um, but if that's the case, is that because it's timed up with entertainment? Is that because there's pent up demand for the ghost? All those sort of things. So it. It's all part of the data we pull in, um, but the more the it's easy to say this. The more th that people buy of specific things, the more likely we'll do more things like that in the future. Um, we we try and make sure that we're delivering a big diverse line, always with the budgets we have, and trying to make smart calls within that. Um, so it might be that the overall budget doesn't change, but it might change the direction of where we focus within those budgets, if that makes sense. Sure. And, and just a tiny little follow-up. You mentioned the N1 multiple times. So um, was that an item that you guys thought would do pretty well, but maybe exceeded expectations? Well, I mention it a lot because I love it and I worked on it's it. It's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Um, there's there's one hiding so right good. up here. Um, but I mean, that's just a, that's an example of a vehicle that did do well. Yeah. Um, but I think like vintage collection fans ask a lot about vehicles. Why I want more vehicles. I want more vehicles. I mean, if vintage collection fans keep buying vehicles that we do, whether that's a speeder bike or or the N1 or an X-Wing, I mean, all, all that sort of stuff goes into like, well, the more successes that there are, the more likely that we'll do more. Sure. So it, it's just, it's that sort of thing. I mean, successes awesome. breed more. So cool. Thank you so much. Cool. All right. Toying around, Kevin. 
Um, just wanted to ask quickly about some uh, characters, like our expanded universe characters uh, on the table or just not a focus right now, and also maybe some of the uh, sequel trilogy characters as well. Or is everything the main focus now kind of uh, original stuff and things that are in entertainment currently? Uh, well, uh, to start, I just want to clarify by expanded universe characters are there ones specifically that you're looking for that we haven't done because we've done a lot i mean from revan and gaming characters right. mara jade dr afro like there's a there's a ton of stuff that we do like that, oh that's that, yeah, yeah that's right that's right that we are doing are there ones that you feel like are missing from that i, uh, I never that, that's I never one of my give that's one of my follow-up list. questions <laughs> yeah because we don't have time for that uh <clears throat> but yeah even those uh like just the focus on it not specific like not just a few characters but like are those always in rotation and also like sequel trilogy uh, yeah all all that stuff is i mean star wars is a is a huge universe beyond just the core movies i mean and now we've got more and more current entertainment and it's i think what's currently on tv or if it was in a movie theater what was in a movie theater like all that stuff would kind of take precedence and be the top of the pile Mm -hmm. for what we would be the focus like that's what's on people's minds at the moment but Star Wars is deep and rich history. So whether that's classic trilogy characters or or a new Finn figure, like all of that sort of stuff, like those are all things that are still in play. And and we'll address them as we can and get them in. And when we do, it's it's looking at what what fan sites have asked for, what people are looking for, what what things on the aftermarket are rare and driving high volumes and a lot of people didn't get a chance to get. So we look at that sort of thing and trying to fill to fill voids in people's collections and displays with with new opportunities or old opportunities coming back. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, awesome. All right. Boba Fett fan club. Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, look, if you want to give us an updated Finn and Poe with like new head sculpts, I'm all ready yes. for that. Uh, Just, justice for Poe Dameron. Sorry, go ahead. We, <laughs> we did pipeline reveal a Finn figure in Vintage Collection, so. We, we need it in a Black Series. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that a lot. Everybody, though, everybody like, who doesn't get it, yeah. <laughs> no, I like I the grass in that yard, yeah. <laughs> I love it, Chelsea. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so I was wondering kind of like how long does it take usually to like develop a figure like say in Ahsoka a surprise appearance happens that Lucasfilm didn't like tell you about like and you know you have to you're trying to like get it out there as soon as possible like how long does that usually take like from the design process and obviously you have to like create packaging and all that kind of stuff. Yeah I mean it's generally somewhere between 12 and 18 months. Um that I know that's a that's a wide range. It depends on the complexity of of what the thing is right. um and and how much bandwidth we have at the moment to to divert onto that path too. Um, a lot of it's about when when looking to the future, when there's an appropriate time to release that too. I mean, yeah, we want to do everybody that's new and a holdback character. We want to do them all as fast as we can. Um, in some cases, like, when Grogu first showed up in that first season of Mandalorian, that was a surprise to everybody. And what an amazing surprise, but the, the team at the time, they were spending nights and weekends and banged through that thing and really delivered product about as fast as is humanly possible. Um, Cause there's, there is, there's so much involved, um, but general, general bandwidth, if it's, if it's just a normal thing happening, 12 to 12 to 18 months for a, a normal, normal figure um and probably closer to the 12 months but it it varies it does so yeah and i think that same timeline has been shared in the past so it's it's just something we it's that's why there's a range it's something that we are constantly you know yeah. working and, with and team. that can and that can be that range can be driven by a lot of different things and that yeah. that can be like whether that falls over over a holiday that where the factory is not working for two weeks or whether there are shipping delays or like all sorts of sorts of things can do that. We try for that 12 months. Sometimes that's 18 months, but we, we 
we look forward and we've got project managers that help us figure out all those logistics and, and week to week things. For sure. Um, Great. Well, I think that's all of the questions, but I think uh, there was one thing we pipeline revealed in the earlier um, rounds of fan interviews, yeah, which I don't know. And you know guys that, didn't ask. Yeah, yeah, you didn't ask. So we are didn't prompt here, us. We are absolutely here to tell you as well. Uh, Chris, do you want to do the honors? Yeah. So as we've answered a lot of questions today about the ghost in the HasLab, uh, the one question you guys didn't ask is about figures. Um, a lot of people have been asking about the figures and the card backs in the ghost. So we know that what we've done there is we've told a great story with those those mural card backs. Um, and I know there are a couple of obvious missing crew members on those mural card backs from the mural. Uh, but we are pipelining today for you guys that we are going to address those. Um, if we get to 17,000 backers on the HasLab, so if if Kanan at 14 and then Zeb at 17 do get backed, then we're going to address both Chopper and Sabine on a mural card back the same way that those other figures have been done. It won't be part of the HasLab. It'll be outside of the HasLab and available for a separate purchase, but we want to make sure that fans can complete that mural set. Um, so yeah. yeah, that'll that'll be outside of the HasLab. Uh, more info to come on that later, but wanted to make sure that everybody knew we weren't gonna, we didn't want to put those in and and kind of firewall them, trap them behind higher tiers, and really make it a struggle to get there for people. We felt like 17 was a good strong number to to shoot for for the HasLab, and then to still be able to deliver those things for everybody seemed really important. So surprise, <laughs> that's awesome. That's so really I do really need awesome. to buy two. <laughs> now you need to buy two. That was my first question. I mean, imagine <laughs> people are going to circle. When those two come out, people are going to need those other three. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, yes. Yeah. Really cool. and yeah. For us, we obviously hear the fan community and there's a lot of questions about that. So we wanted to address it directly. And I think the fan interviews is a great way to do that. But, you know, 17,000 with Zeb, that is our goal. Um, it would be amazing to complete that full mural. Uh, collection of it, it as a separate purchase, as Chris mentioned. Um, but yeah, go back the ghost, get the ghost, you know, at HasbroPulse.com. And the other thing is we will also, as a quick little um, slide in, is next week, we also have an Ahsoka live stream. So if you guys oh. want to join us, yeah, that just got announced maybe like a day or so ago. But if you want to join us for Ahsoka uh, themed reveal live stream next week, it's Tuesday. Um, please do and tell your your friends and family and fans. Um, but yeah, we're excited to to talk more Ahsoka at that time as well. Sweet. Very exciting. Very All cool. right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I know it takes time out of your day. Um, we love chatting with you about all things Star Wars. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll chat soon. There's more to come for Ahsoka. Keep watching those episodes. Keep backing the ghost. Um, and then, yeah, we'll we'll definitely catch up soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Do I, do I just leave? <laughs>